Hello again, minions. Welcome to another Wheezy's Weekly Wrap-Up. In this video, we're going to talk about what you missed on the channel this week, and we're also going to talk to you about kind of my personal thoughts on the increasing move towards digital games and how I feel about physical games versus digital games. And I want to hear what you guys have to think as well. So, let's go talk. Did I just say have to think in the intro? Anyway, <laughs> let's get right into what was on the channel this past week, which is kind of interesting because I have to decide right now what the fourth video is going to be because I haven't made it live yet. So the first thing I posted the channel this week was a how-to on how to capture gameplay and chat audio from a PS4 or a PS5 with a capture device like an Elgato or an Aver Media because... The PlayStation is fucking weird, and unlike the Xbox, when you plug your headset into the controller, the audio for the PlayStation only comes through the controller and it stops coming out the TV or whatever your display device is. Versus the Xbox, which has the option, and by default, when you plug your headphones in, it goes through both. Like, anyway. <laughs> I explain that all in more detail, as well as how you can, very simply, work around that for game capture. If you're interested, take a look. Here's a clip. Okay, so I had to restart OBS to, since I unplugged and replugged in the line in, but you can see there, the audio is going through line in um, so that when I capture it, I am able to get all that audio. So again, if I unplug this, you'll see that the audio switches from line in to the Elgato and then plug it back in and it's back to line in. And one of the cool things about having it set up this way is with my headset, if I turn on the microphone, hello, hello, you can see I'm the microphone port for the PC mic port is capturing that audio separately. So this gives you the most flexibility on how you can capture your audio. Okay, and after that, uh, they dropped another new weapon for Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the RAL machine gun. and. I just, I'm honestly like, the CX-9 and now the RAL, releasing two primary weapons for Modern Warfare has just made me so happy. So I did a video on the fastest way to unlock it, as well as jumping into a couple of games with it to get some thoughts on what I thought of it. And uh, yeah, it just, it always feels good to go back to Modern Warfare, which also leads into Vanguard. But anyway, let's see a clip from the RAL MG episode of how to unlock shit faster. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> Four. Oh, that was almost all of it. You son of a bitch. Five. <laughs> Let's check to make sure. Four of seven. We're outie. It takes longer to load the games than it does to complete the challenge. The Rinnecons. Reconnaissance, the Renaissance. Reconnaissance Auxiliary Assault Lightweight Machine Gun uses a low fire rate and reciprocating barrel to mitigate the powerful 338 Norma Mag recoil. Advanced titanium construction keeps the meat manageable. I fucking hate people in our car. One. Two. So yeah, if, you, if you're not still playing Modern Warfare and you're playing Cold War, I'm sorry. I, like, I feel bad for you because Cold Oh my god. Anyway, speaking of not Cold War anymore. On PlayStation, uh, they dropped the Call of Duty Vanguard Alpha as I record this this weekend. Today's the 28th, so 27th, 28th till the morning of the 29th. So by the time this goes live on Monday, it'll be over. Um, I've already got a video posted for my initial like three games that I played and kind of my live impressions. I'm definitely gonna be doing at least one more video. I got a really awesome gameplay that was like a nail biter down to the end. Um, so expect to see that along with, I'm going to commentate that one um, and explain kind of how I feel about Champion Hill and kind of the strategies that I use as well as just kind of general thoughts as well as it just being a cool gameplay. Just like the way that the strat it, Champion Hill is turning out to be kind of a really interesting sort of chess match game. It's a really cool concept. But anyway, I recorded a video for my initial impressions um, as I was going through it. So if you guys are interested in seeing Call of Duty Vanguard and hearing my initial thoughts on whether or not I think it's going to be good or not, 
spoiler alert, it's on the Modern Warfare engine, so it's at least going to be better than Cold War. So, here's a clip from that video. So is this like the... Like that slow play strat, some of these teams are just like, hold on to their lives. We're done here. Stretch your legs. Alright, get some stuff. Is there money? Give me all the money. Oh, there's doors. This is the Modern Warfare engine. I'm so excited. Spectator. Oh, that's okay. You got ten seconds. So, no, there's not really, not really score, per se. Team Baker has been banned. Team Abel was eliminated. What? 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 What the fuck? What happened? Why did- why did we lose? Yeah, I- I think over the last day or so since I've played the alpha, I'm- I've kind of convinced myself that I'm gonna pre-order the game anyway, just because, I mean, it's gonna be good. The campaign's gonna be good. The multiplayer's gonna be all right. I'm gonna I'm definitely be spending more time. Oh, excuse me. Morning coffee. Um, definitely be spending more time uh, in Battlefield 2042. But this is not gonna be a game to sleep on, especially since it's on the Modern Warfare engine. So I'm I'm excited for it. Uh, after that, I've decided I'm going to post. It will have already been posted. After last week's weekly wrap-up where I asked what other kind of games should I be playing for this channel, because I try to mix in like one random gameplay a week. Um, Ancap, loyal, faithful, <laughs> good buddy of the channel Ancap, said Madden. I think he was being sarcastic. If you weren't, I'm concerned, Ancap. But it doesn't matter, because I did it. Because <laughs> it's on EA Play, and it cost me nothing but my integrity. So, I posted, will post, have posted, a video that I think is quite entertaining of me playing some Madden NFL 21. So here's a clip of that. That ain't my fault. I'm just out here trying to hashtag in racism. <laughs> uh, I'm Martin, I'm not fit for me. Oh yeah, that's a pose. That is, that is, that is a wheezy style pose. That is exactly how I roll. Uh, I'm Martin, I'm not Bobby. Oh yeah, that's a pose. We're a little spread out. What are we gonna do? What? Hey, fucking Butterfingers, catch the ball! Okay, so that's everything you missed. There's links and shit as usual if you guys want to go check that stuff out. As always, leave comments and your thoughts on whatever on the channel this weekly wrap-up is just kind of a place to tag up with you guys and just stay to the channel sort of thing um so let's talk about physical versus digital games because this is becoming increasingly problematic for me because i have always since kind of the advent of digital games been an advocate and a and a staunch supporter of physical games and the reason is multitudes right the main of which is that a physical game, when I throw it in my console, I can play it. And in an age where older like game servers and stuff like that are getting shut down, there's a part of me that always wants to own a game physically so I can go and get it off the shelf, have like a collection. I'm a bit of a collector. Um, you can tell from my, a collection of video games I have to sell on eBay. Um, but I like having the games. I can pull them off the shelf, put them in. These days, it can be kind of inconvenient, especially since now every game requires a giant install and a downloadable update, so having the disc isn't as big of an advantage as far as being able to throw it in and play, because if you throw it in, it'll still have to download and update and install and all that stuff, so it doesn't really save you a whole lot as far as, like, with limited storage on consoles where you have to delete games to install new games, and then if you want to play an old game, you've got to uninstall something... That's a different issue that is still really irritating. It is a big problem with modern consoles. But I just like having that physical game. And the other thing that it does is it allows you to resell it, right? So if I have a game that I, that's okay, 
Like, I'm not a huge fan of it. Like, that's probably how uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to be if I ever get around to deciding to finish it. I'll probably turn around and sell it for a few bucks. Just because it's not one that needs to stay in my collection. I'm never going to pull it back off the shelf and play it again. That's part of the reason why I... Some games I do begrudgingly buy digital, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, no, it was an Odyssey. It was... Yeah, it was Odyssey. Um, I bought digitally on a deep sale. I didn't get it when it came out. So, like, a year or two after it was out... It was really cheap on the Xbox Marketplace for like a few bucks. So I picked it up, played it, enjoyed it. I don't care if I resell it because I didn't spend much money on it. If I buy a game brand new for 60 bucks, especially one that I'm maybe not sure if I'm going to enjoy it, I like having the physical disc in case I want to sell it and get a little bit of money back to help fund my gaming addiction. Um, so digital games on discount, especially if it's not like a game that you want to have forever, like games like Bioshock, like my some of my all five all-time favorite games, I just want to have. I just want to have those games. That said, because of how things are going digitally, for instance, Black Ops Cold War, which I'm not, you know, not going to go in my Hall of Fame, I bought digitally because it came out at the first crossover between the PS4 and PS5, and so I didn't know when I pre-ordered it if I was going to have a PS5 when the PS5 launched. I got lucky and ended up getting one from the Sony website. So I bought the cross-gen bundle, which was digital, right? Because as opposed to Xbox's smart delivery where you get the one disc and it can work in either, which is really cool. Um, I got that digitally. For Battlefield 2042, I also decided to give in and get that digitally because the physical copy is only the standard edition. If you want the edition that also includes the first year of seasonal content included, that's only available digitally right now, at least as far as pre-order. And you need to have a pre-order to get into like the beta and stuff like that. So I begrudgingly pre-ordered like ordered that, pre-ordered it digitally. So if there if I if it's if it's the game I think it's probably going to be and I end up falling in love with it, I may at some point down the road keep an eye on eBay and pick up a disc on the cheap, just because that's kind of the collector that I am. But yeah, so now I'm in this quandary with Call of Duty Vanguard, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to pre-order it, I'm pretty certain now. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be one of those that sits on my shelf as like a really great one to have, because World War II is still not my kind of thing. So, do I get it digitally and like get that kind of instant thing preload? Like, do I get the disc? It's, it's becoming more difficult for me to stay in the I want a physical copy of the game kind of segment. Um, so for instance with Cold War, since I'm sick of it and not playing it anymore, I can't turn around and sell that disc because I don't have one. It's digital. I paid full price for it and I that's that's what it is. What are you guys' thoughts? Because I haven't really, as you can tell, I haven't really like come to a, a really solid conclusion. On that note though, I also bought Aliens Fireteam digitally. Haven't even played it yet, but decided to buy it digitally just, I don't know, just support it immediately. I, eh. We'll see if I like it. I don't necessarily anticipate it's going to be like an alien isolation, like a Hall of Fame game. Aliens, you know, we'll see. But tell me what you guys think. I'm going to stop rambling once again, trying to keep the weekly wrap-up pretty short. Uh, leave comments. Keep sticking around on the channel. Interact. If somehow my weekly wrap-up is the way that you found this channel, go check out my other stuff. Subscribe. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever really done a channel plug on a weekly wrap-up. Don't worry, I won't make it a habit. Okay. Bye, minions.